Hello, hello, and happy Thursday. Welcome to Melissa's Crafting Treehouse. My name is Melissa Kerman. I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I've been a demonstrator for 20 years. Um, can't even believe it hit my 20th anniversary um, in March this past year. So uh, super excited to be here with you today. I have a fun project that brings together um, uh, products that are retiring, products that are carrying over into the new 2023-24 annual catalog, and some brand new products. So uh, super fun, pretty simple card. Um, and it actually uses one of the products that's my absolute favorite from the mini that is carrying over. So I'm super excited about that. Um, I got a few quick announcements and then we'll launch into the project. And let's just, I'm gonna share my screen here just a sec and show you my desktop. So I've um, got my, my current host code um, uh, right here at the top in case you'd like to place an order. Lots of blog posts uh, on my website if you wanna go check that out. Um, now, I currently have my Taste of a Sweet product share offering happening now ends through April 30th. So um, on April 30th, that's the last day to reserve your shares. Um, and I do a unique set of product shares where I feature a product suite and you get a little bit of all the products that are included in that suite, the consumables that is. So um, they're really uh, unique and fun and it helps me to get a little bit of a lot of things as well so I can play and show you guys more. So <clears throat> that's going on, like I said, till Sunday, April 30th. And there is a link here, and I'm just noticing that is super pale, and like you probably can't even see that. But all of this information is going to be in the description of this video in case you want to go check out the product shares and get more details and information and sign up to reserve them. All right. So the Makers Mojo Creative Escape event happened this past weekend. It was amazing. We shared over 45 different projects or project variations using tons of different products. So that was super fun. You can get the After the Live event now if you'd like. I included details about that in my newsletter and there are details in the description of this video as well. Um, now, if you're joining in, please comment and say hello. Tell me uh, who you are, where you're from. Uh, I always like to chat a little bit with um, the people that are watching just for the fun of it. And if you're brand new to Melissa's Crafting Treehouse, welcome. Thank you so much for joining in. Um, and of course, welcome to those of you who are regulars. <laughs> um, all right. So Baker's Mojo was this past weekend. Now, right after we finish an event, we, about a week later, we offer an early bird opportunity with a uh, special drawing attached um, for people who register um, for the early bird. So we're doing a summer event in July. Hi, Laura Lee. Hi, MJ. Um, and uh, that registration starts next Tuesday, so May 2nd to May 9th. Um, so there'll be more details on that actual event and the registration link and all that good stuff coming next week. But there, uh, you can look at, look at my website for more information about um, the uh, Makers Mojo Creative Escape event. It would be under the events tab on this website right here. <laughs> All right. Um, you may be aware that um, the annual catalog and mini catalog that's currently live now retires as of May 1st. That's Monday of this coming week. There are last chance items, lots of them and lots of things um, that are discounted. Um, and some of them super deep, deeply discounted. So you can get some great deals. There's also a clearance rack refresh going on right now that just started a few days ago. Those items are definitely deeply discounted. So you can get some amazing deals on products there. And the new annual category is live on May 2nd. May have said that already, but you know, there you go. <laughs> so um, yes, and if you're watching and you enjoy what I create either now or while I'm creating, um, share and tag your friends. Um, follow me here on Facebook or on YouTube, subscribe, like all those good things, share the love with others, all right? Appreciate that so much if you do. All right. Um, okay. I'm going to just switch my camera down. Well, actually, no. I mean, you don't need to see my face anymore. You can just see my desktop because I'm going to show you the project. Now, I don't actually have, well, I do actually have a finished project, but my finished project is made with reti some retiring, re some retired product as well. And it's a project that I made that I never managed to share. So I decided to remake it using um, current products and new products. So this is my card sample. We're going to be doing a pretty different version of it today, completely different color scheme and products. Um, 
and uh, I've used the alphabet all mode dies for the sentiment there. So this is the product I was saying is my all time favorite thing from this current mini. And I'm so glad that it's continuing and carrying over into the new annual catalog. And then I'm also going to be using the deckled dies um, to die cut this outside shape and um, and some other new things. So I'll show you that as we go. So we're going to start with using some of the new designer paper in the catalog. Check out this paper. I actually shared it in a project last week, but it didn't necessarily show off the paper maybe as well as I might like. But that was one of the cards that I did last week in last week's Facebook Live. It's a, a split card or a, what do they call it? A peekaboo card, because you can kind of peek through, although I'm covering up most of the front, but it's a really fun card. There was, I did three versions of this. So you can see that and this and the other two on my um, website, on my blog, actually. So here is just a quick little peek at these gorgeous, fun, happy papers. This is part of the, let's see, what is it called? Beautiful Balloons product suite, which is one of the product shares that I'm offering. And um, if you haven't seen it, I've got a complete menu, I like to play on words, of my taste of a sweet product shares. <laughs> so that's all there on my website, just in case you, you're interested. The Bright and Beautiful Sweet, that's actually what it's called, is the one I'm working with today, at least as far as the designer paper is concerned. All right. So I am going to be showing you sort of parts of a couple of different designs. So I've got some pieces in process, um, and I want to just show you how I did some of these things. You can see I'm using one of the designer paper pieces there. And I've got some of my pieces prepared ahead of time. All right, um, so I've got a piece of cardstock here. Now I have already die cut some of my uh, letters out of it. And that's because I need two P's for this. I'm doing happy, okay? Now notice I have my H, A, and P. Uh, they're attached to a piece of, um, it's a piece of um, <laughs> press and seal, my late favorite uh, household item that I can use in my paper crafting, holds the letters together in exactly the position that I want them to. And I can even, you know, I can mess with it and put it down and it all stays on there. So earlier today, I was playing around with the word friend, my crafty friends, <laughs> and I put that onto a piece of um, press and seal so I can now use this. I've intentionally put the letters wonky back and forth um, on another card if I want to. So um, press and seal is a fabulous uh, little tool you can use in your crafting space. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and place this on here and bring my mini stamp and cut and emboss machine in and go ahead and do my die cutting of these remaining three letters. Now on the back side, I included an adhesive sheet on one side. I forgot to do it on this side, but there's there's multiple ways you can tack down these letters. So um, I'm gonna show you both methods, uh, one without the adhesive sheet and one with. So now the one thing about the press and seal is that when you first start using it, it's actually pretty tacky and can pull up the paper. So, um, this piece that I'm using here on my H, A, and P is, you know, kind of a well-loved piece. It's been used multiple times, which you can do, which is another nice little tip. Um, you can see that on this piece. It's got all kinds of little pieces of paper on it. It helps remove some of the stick, but sometimes it will re remove a little bit of the paper. So that is one thing you need to be careful of. Um, and uh, I especially like it just a little bit better than something like washi tape because it's bigger. You can have custom sizes. Um, you can have big pieces or small pieces or, you know, uh, with the washi tape, you just have a small piece. And for something like this, I used washi tape the first time I did it, but it wouldn't hold all the letters in place. So there's no way you'd be able to do this because it, um, it rips it as you bring it through the um, stamp and cut and emboss machine. Okay. So when you take it off, um, hi, Sue, good to see you here. How much is the replay for Makers Mojo? Good question. It is the same price as if you did it live. And the only difference is that you get it all instantly. So if you click on the link in the video description um, to buy um, the after the live Makers Mojo event, you'll, your receipt email will include links to all the, the PDFs and all the videos. So it's an instant thing and the cost is $45. Same thing as if you bought it um, 
and attended the live event. All right. So thanks for asking that. So I appreciate it. Okay. Let me just grab my um, paper cursing tool here and you can see the letters are still stuck in there. So I need to pull back a little bit of my press and seal and poke out the letters. And this assumes I could take it off completely, but if I want to use this again for another happy, <laughs> uh, I might want to just leave it on here. So um, let's just poke these guys out. And I probably, okay, so, and I want to save all the pieces because I like to use the negative and positive space of these um, dies. Okay, I'm just poking that out. All right. <clears throat> so, like I said, I'm just going to set that aside. If I want to use it again, I can, but I don't have to. Um, and so I've got my negative space piece. And these little pieces um, become useful if you want to use the negative space. So I've got my little inner piece right there. And then I've got my individual letters. Now these ones each have adhesive on the back side because I put that adhesive sheet back there. But the other ones that I um, created earlier, I forgot to put the adhesive sheet on. So here's these ones. I'm going to show you, I put a uh, white glue on the back of those. Uh, and I'm going to show you how I did that on another piece um, uh, at a, a slightly different point in the process. Okay, so um, to make my cards, you can see on this one, I used my negative space piece and I have this whole piece popped up on dimensionals. I really like that because it just uh, gives you a little bit of extra space and dimension. You can see the shadows uh, in around the letters and it just calls some nice attention to those letters. So the, um, the, there's a positive and negative. So these letters have adhesive on the back. So having adhesive over here is a good thing, but then when you um, peel them off, you're going to expose all that adhesive. And since I want to use this popped up, I don't want all that adhesive exposed. In fact, I don't want any of it exposed. So here's the trick. I'm going to just take my dimensionals, place them where I want them all over my piece. Um, and I'll use some little ones, some baby dimensionals and some larger ones. And I'll cut some strips along here. And then I'm just going to kind of fast forward to another version that I did so you can see uh, a finished piece. And a lot of these big ones might be too big for some of these spots, but I'm just going to stick a few in there. So I'm going to cover this whole thing. And I kind of go crazy with covering because I really want it to be well popped up. But there is extra adhesive in here. And if um, that adhesive, if you don't cover it or do something to it, you can see it's shiny. It's going to stick down and some parts will be raised up and some will be pressed down. So what I like to do is take my embossing buddy and I just tap it. And the powder basically sticks to the stickiness, the part you don't want to be sticky, and it removes the stickiness. So it's a nice little tip if you're going to do a piece that's popped up like this. All right. I have another one that I'm going to finish, but you can see kind of where I'm headed with this one. Got a piece of the designer paper in back, a piece of, this is the returning um, lemon lime twist uh, cardstock. And then this one is the brand new lemon lolly. Um, it's, uh, I don't usually go for pastels, but I really like this color. I'm also, I'm using a pastel on one of the other versions I'm doing today. And um, I love them both, which is kind of strange for me because I'm typically not a pastel color lover. Anyway, so there's lots of colors in here. I love this, pa this pattern. So I'm going to be using this piece on the front here. I'm going to finish this one off camera because I want to jump to another one that I've done that I'm further along on to show you some of the other parts. The magic of TV. <laughs> All right, so for my other one, I'm gonna show you my, actually I need to show you this first. Okay, 
So the other thing I'm using on this is these deckled rectangle dies. And you can, you can um, nest them and do multiple cuts at the same time, which I have done here. So I've used these two dies at the same time. And you can see I've used my um, press and seal to hold it together. And then I'm just gonna pull off that outside piece. It's being held on by the press and seal. And then I get my outside layer right there. That's gonna be for the card I just took away. And then this inside piece, you know, you'll use on a different card, but not for this one. So we're gonna set those guys aside. But you can see these are held together. They're in just the right spacing so that this has an even edge on all four sides, pretty close anyway. And you can use this again and again, right? Because my present seal is on there. Pretty nifty. All right, so um, to create this focal piece, I'm gonna use a piece of vellum. Now on the back side of this, I have put some white glue and allowed it to dry. So just some of the multi-purpose liquid glue. This is my trick. It's white when you first put it on there, you let it dry for 10 minutes or more, and then it's just tacky and clear and you can handle it. it doesn't get on your fingers. It's um, a lovely little trick. So I've got a piece of vellum that's uh, semi uh, clear, I guess. Translucent, I guess would be the right word. And I'm just gonna tack that down. So then I have this nice little backing that's gonna be for my, my focal piece. And then I'm gonna bring that other piece back in just so you can kind of see what it will generally look like. And then that's gonna get attached in there. Bring that up to the camera so you can get a better look. And then I will take the, the two centers of the P's and put those back in, the center of the A and put it back in and um, assemble that. So um, now the other thing I'm, I'm gonna do is put a piece of white in behind. So I'm gonna jump to the one that is further along. So here's my finished assembled piece for a different version that I'm making. This is Fresh Freesia. The outside color is, um, bubble bath is what it's called. It's a really pretty soft pink. I think Stampin' Up's intention is to replace the color that is going away, which is Blushing Bride. Never really loved blush, brushing, Blushing Bride. <laughs> so um, I'm loving this light pink and it goes really well with the Fresh Freesia. So there's the front. I told you I got, I got my vellum in the back, just like I showed you. I've attached this top piece with my uh, dimensionals. And then if you look at the back side, you see how all those dimensionals I have back there? So I put those all on, all over. Uh, th this is what, th this is what this would look like if it had all the dimensionals in back. Of course, it's covered by the vellum, but you can see how it's assembled. All right. Um, and then the other thing I did was I took some white glue and just put dabs on it where the dimensionals are to make sure that the glue is hidden because you will see glue through the vellum if you put it in a place where the vellum is, uh, where there isn't a cardstock or um, there. So that's the fully assembled um, piece. Uh, and we're going to use that for making this card. All right. This has the adhesive on the back, so I'm gonna just put it down on my um, silicone craft mat so it doesn't stick to my paper, which would be quite unfortunate. All right. So let's grab the piece for this card and I'm gonna quickly build it. I've got a piece of the bubble gum uh, cardstock, this pale pink that I just love. And I'm gonna put a piece of fresh freesia card stuck on it. I've got my adhesive on the backs of all these pieces, kind of doing that magic of TV thing. So I can jump forward and show you how it all comes together really quickly. And I just realized that I forgot one piece. <laughs> it's supposed to go in behind this. Let's see if I can pull it off. This seems to always happen. I didn't press it too hard and I just put it on there. So look at this. It's coming off pretty easily. I only really need to pull off the middle. So I'm using this piece of specialty paper. Check out this specialty paper. It's the fine shimmer paper. 
It comes in a pack with three colors. I have to show you this. This is retiring, this paper. It is such pretty paper. Absolutely love it. This is the Fresh Freesia. Of course, you've got gold there. That soft succulent, which is a color that's going away. Um, and I'm pretty sure if I understand the new catalog, I think there's going to be a set of this style of paper in five different colors. And that is one of the, the um, specialty papers that's available um, as part of my specialty paper share. So I am doing uh, a, one a, a product share that's focused specifically on the specialty papers that are not included in the suites. So I'm, I'm hoping that it is exactly this beautiful paper because it looks like it in the catalog. Uh, so I just, I love this paper. Hi, Lynn. Oh, you're, you're from Delaware. Thank you for commenting and letting me know. That's lovely. All right. And Melissa Mitchell. Hi, Melissa. Good to have you here. All right. So I'm just going to grab this piece of my uh, Fresh Freesia shimmer paper and I'm tucking it in here. It's supposed to be sent. Well, I'm going to pull this off. It'll be easier to put it on. It's supposed to go side to side and centered on my piece. Make sure I'm in camera here. like that, mostly centered. <laughs> and then we're going to put this on top. It's such a shame to cover it up, but it's going to give me this really nice little bit of shimmer on the side, which I really love. So you can see it's, a, it's just a touch, a touch of shine along the edges. Um, okay. And then this is one of the patterns from this uh, bright and beautiful designer series paper, what I showed you just a bit ago. Again, it's got adhesive on the back. So and this, this card makes me think of a baby card. <laughs> I really wanted to do something like hello baby or welcome baby or something like that. But um, logistically, it didn't quite work. I really needed five letters <laughs> to fit in exactly this layout the way I wanted to. So uh, didn't quite work to do that, but that's okay. We're going to have a birthday card that's kind of a very feminine pretty little birthday card so this has adhesive already on the back i did that on purpose and i'm just going to go ahead and place it right here on my designer paper i love this monochromatic simple kind of color scheme okay just like that and now i need a bit of ribbon i forgot to grab where did i put it it's right here somewhere <laughs> Uh, oh, let's see. I had. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Okay. It got removed somewhere along the way. Um, uh, let's see. I had one that was done. And there it is. So there it is. Wonderful. Okay. <laughs> I was organizing and trying to clean up. Now, this ribbon that I made a bow with this ribbon, okay, it's the gl white glitter ribbon. And I, I had a bow that was pre done. So, um, just decided to, to use this one on this card. Uh, this ribbon is staying current. So uh, super excited that it's sticking around because I really like it. And I just need some glue dots. And I'm just gonna put a glue dot on the back side of my tied bow. And I'm gonna roll it up so that it, it's hidden back there. Now I am not, I have children, but none of them are at the age where they would be having kids yet or in a position to have kids yet. But um, I just think if this was a baby card, it would be just the perfect thing, especially for a girl baby, of course. Um, but uh, yeah, so I got my little itty bitty ribbon at the top and now I need my birthday. So I'm going to use um, this tiny little piece of white. I'm going to show you a quick little trick. Um, now I'm using an image for the birthday from the Enjoy the Rhythm set. So it's got this happy birthday image. I just want the birthday part, right? So I'm going to show you a little trick. You might already know it um, for just very easily getting the portion of the stamp that you want. So I'm grabbing a post-it note. And I'm going to put my post-it note over the happy, just like that. So it's just sitting there. Move my piece out of the way. And then I've got my Fresh Freesia ink pad. 
Got to make sure that stays. Could also use a piece of tape or something, and then I'm just going to go right over the top. Okay, and then this comes off. And the hard part is getting it stamped straight. <laughs> so I got two tries. Either I'm going to do it's going to be this side or the other side, but let's just see if I can do this. Okay. Now, when I have one done, so if I don't do it right, I'm good to go, huh? Okay, so let's just stamp that right on there. It's pretty itty bitty, but it is very helpful to have a dark background when you're working with a white piece. Oh, now that is the first I've done it the first time around and it's actually centered and straight. I'm almost shocked. <laughs> it's uh, sometimes it takes a few tries. Usually it takes me a few tries. Um, even this one isn't exactly as perfect as the other one. This one I did earlier and I thought that one was pretty good. So there's my little birthday. Now, I'm just going to bring that in. I'm going to use some glue dots and I'm going to just attach it right to the bottom corner there. Just right there. And it looks like I have a little tiny bit of ink at the top there. Maybe I need to use the one I did earlier. Um, well, I'm going to show you one other thing. A little tool here that I use. I'm going over here. And this is not something sold by Stampin' Up, but it's a fabulous tool. I think Stampin' Up should sell it. It's a sand eraser. And it basically is just a way to get some, uh, some a, a little smudge or whatever, a little bit of ink off of your paper really easily um, when you get something where you don't want it. It basically sands off a little bit of the top layer. And even if it doesn't get it all off, it gets enough off to make... Um, it subtle enough so it looks acceptable. So I think I'm going to go with that one because it is straighter than the other one. And since I'm attaching this at the top, I really want the dimension, the glue dots to be justified towards the top of my sentiment piece. So I'm going to just do two of them there. And then just go ahead and attach that. It's going to hang off a little bit off the right side. And I want to see the top bit of my bubble gum right up at the top. So there we have it so far. I think I'm going to add a few um, embellishments to this as well. I had some on my last one also. So, oh, okay, yeah. So. All right, I just realized another thing that I forgot to put on there. So here's another side benefit of using the white glue. And that is if you let the white glue dry, you can actually easily pull it up. So I forgot one step, which was I'm going to put a piece of, so here, check this out. This is actually nice just the way it is, right? If you look at it there, you can see the pattern through the letters. And so the letters aren't as crisp as they might, um, you might want them to be. So I, I'm going to put a white piece back there so that uh, it's, the letters are a little bit more crisp. And that's, you know, that's why I have the adhesive back here, but I just forgot. So I'm going to turn it over so that I can really see that it's where it needs to be. Yeah, maybe it's been sort of glued this way. Okay, we'll do with that. And I have adhesive on the back side of this piece because it needs to attach to the card as well, right? So let's see. So now there's the difference. You can see how much brighter that happy comes out with a solid uh, in the background. And now this is super tacky because that's nice strong adhesive and it's going to hold the thing down. And the birthday is supposed to be, oh, I got it. So I put the wrong way. <laughs> I keep putting it on, putting it wonky. Okay, there we go. It's supposed to be angled that way. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> Now let's pick some embellishments. So on my original card, I used these iridescent pearls. 
but I wanted to bring in a couple of other ones just to see, because you know each design is a little bit different. And these uh, iridescent um, rhinestones actually have a, a little bit of pink in them more than the others. So I'm just kind of looking at them to see which one I like. And then I've just got regular rhinestones, which will stand out quite a bit, but I'm gonna go ahead and do my original because I think I like that the best. So I've just got, I'm gonna take one of my large ones down here on the left. There's two sizes here. We've got a large one and a small one, and then one more small one at the top. Just a nice little touch, kind of makes it look like bubbles almost. So there you go. There's my finished card. <laughs> now I do have the other pieces of that other version right here, but I'm not going to do that on camera. I will finish it off camera and uh, you'll get to see what these pieces all look like uh, uh, in the end. And I wanted to show you one other quick thing. So now when I die cut this, right, I got my what I'm calling positive space pieces, the ones that came out of here. And you can use those too, right? Oh, hi, Lisa. Hi, Linda. I'm looking up and noticing comments. <laughs> um, and so I, I designed a, a bit of an alternative focal piece that uses, it's the, um, the next size up of frame. So you can see it's bigger than this one. And for this one, I use the fresh freezer for the outline got my vellum on the back, just like I did with my other designs, just a little bit bigger. And then I took, um, this was the cutout piece from inside of this one, right? So I'm using the leftover pieces. That's going to go right in there. And then I've got my, my actual uh, letters that are going to get attached on my vellum here. Now, this one has um, an adhesive sheet in behind that I'm going to peel off. This one, I need to put white glue on. So I'm going to go ahead and just quickly do that. And just going to lay that on there. Now, if I put on a really light coat, then I can put it down right away. I usually try to let it dry so it doesn't ooze. I might just be living dangerously today because I didn't allow enough time to dry. <laughs> didn't allow any time to dry. I got, um, so let's put this one on first. So I'm just going to use my paper piercing tool to um, poke the white paper off the back, peel it off. And then I can even use that as a little handle to hold on to it. I've attached the other letters, as you can see, and I'm centering it on my white piece so I can get my positioning uh, right. So the white is going to go in behind. And then this is all wet, right? So I don't even really want to pick it up. I'm going to get my fingers sticky, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm doing it for you guys because <laughs> I want this. I want to show you this. All right. So there we go. I know some people hate to have sticky fingers. So there's my happy on the vellum. You can see through it. And then what I'll do is, again, use some white glue, draw lines on the back side of where the letters are, again, so that I'm hiding the glue behind the letters. And I'm just using a little bit this one had a bit more on it. I'm gonna grab a, I can grab this post-it note and just press it onto there to remove a little bit of that glue. And uh, now I just need to steer it in the right direction. So it's not oozing off the edge. Just wanna take some off, so. All right, let's see how that looks. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and tack it down to the white. And again, the happy now stands out so we can really see, see it really well. And then we'll just go ahead and attach these pieces. Let's go ahead and 
do that. I want to just show you how the card looks differently uh, by just placing this over the top, as you can see. So I like to use the negative and the positive pieces. I can't, can't bear to waste them. So this is pretty much a whole another card. I just need a new card base and some designer paper. So there we go. So there's another fun little happy. And I've got another birthday to use here um, that I did. And then it would just be like that, right? So it fills it out a little bit more. And of course the bow would be on top, but so there's a second way to do it and um, using the, uh, the positive space pieces instead of the negative space. So there you go. That's what I got for you today. <laughs> I hope you like it. Let's uh, switch me around. I'm back. <laughs> it's so fun to be able to switch and um, flip so easily. Um, uh, using my stream yard. Yay, stream yard. <laughs> Allowing me to do this. Okay, so there you go. I'll just pull in those pieces so you can see them. Um, now, I always do a blog post following the video. Um, the blog post is usually ready by Saturday, so you can expect to see that um, on Saturday on my website, and then also um, this video would be on YouTube on Saturday also. Um, and just just the quick little reminder. I'm going to split my screen here. Let's do that. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm going to get me in the middle. So yeah, all of reminders. Don't forget to order your Taste of a Sweet product shares um, by Sunday. Um, and I do have a little video. I, I did um, sort of a walkthrough of what I have been able to purchase in the way of the product shares products last Thursday. So that is on the product shares page on my website. It only has a very small uh, number of the products and product shares that I'm showing because I can only buy a small number of products for annual catalog um, when the annual catalog pre-order. Um, but uh, there are some photographs on there that stamp that are actually directly from the catalog that we're allowed to share. So you can look at uh, the product suites a little bit more if you haven't received your catalog yet. So um, yeah, check them out. And of course, Makers Mojo after the live is available and starting next week, you can register for the early bird for the summer event. Um, and of course, last chance items and um, May 1st, next Monday, clearance rack, check it out. Annual catalog coming soon. So fun. <laughs> um, and I'm going to be doing my new, um, my new in color bookmark really soon. Um, that is actually one of the perks that I offered for early bird for um, the product shares. So some of you will get that for sure. Uh, and my club members always get a bookmark as well. Always fun. So I will be back next Thursday, um, barring any challenges of any sort. Um, and uh, then I will actually be taking a little break. Got a trip planned. Um, uh, in May. So I'm going live three consecutive weeks, last week, this week, next week. And then I'll be taking a little bit of break from Facebook Live and just a little recap. Yes. So these are the, the alphabet dies that I use. Love those. The deckled rectangles are carrying over. I love that. Um, what else do I have to show you? Oh yeah. And this is the stamp set and uh, dies that go with this suite that I'm featuring today with this um, bright and beautiful designer series paper. So such fun, such fun products. So, um, hi Jan. So glad to see you here. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm actually just finishing up. So, um, you'll have to watch the replay. <laughs> um, just a, a minute. Uh, yeah. All right. So anyway, um, yeah. And then I forgot, enjoy the rhythm, use the birthday from enjoy the rhythm. So hopefully you've learned something new today. And, uh, again, if you enjoyed this video, share it with friends and, um, subscribe to my YouTube channel and all that good stuff. And uh, if you feel so inclined, click on that little heart on the Facebook page. I love to see hearts. I always forget to remind people to do that, <laughs> but it's always so fun to see hearts. Um, so, um, all right. Well, you guys have a wonderful evening, wonderful week, 
and uh, let me know if you have any questions and, you know, I'll see you soon. Bye, everybody. I'm so glad you like it, Melissa. <laughs> um, yes, I like how you can use both the negative and positive pieces, the punch piece and the background piece. I especially love using the background pieces. Um, all right. Go get crafty, everybody. Bye. <laughs>